How's it going everyone? Mitch here with another Logic Pro 9 tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to be talking about vocal production from beginning to end. Now this is going to be different from one producer to the next. There's no set way. There's multiple ways of getting a very nice vocal track um, and it's going to be different for different genres of music also. So I'm just going to be showing you uh, one specific way, the way I would do it. Uh, there's so many other ways to do it that um, you can still go out and learn brand new methods of doing things. So, all right, here's the song that I have in front of me. I'm going to play a section of the song just so we can get a feel of the song before we start uh, getting into these vocals and uh, fixing them all up. So let's listen to it. Alright, so it's more of an alternative rock, uh, that kind of a song. So, what we have here is vocals that I set back to as the best that I could, the vocals that I would have right at the, right after I recorded them. Alright, so these are just straight up audio tracks, and these tracks do not have any plugins on them, no sends, no nothing. So they're just going to be dry, um, uh, tracks at this point. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and we are going to uh, we're gonna do some fun stuff with these. Freaking awesome, right? All right. So the first thing I would have to think about is uh, I would have to look at the actual audio file and say, do I want to normalize this audio or not? If you do want to normalize the audio, if there is some audio files that are very low and some that are very very loud, you might want to go into normalize them. The alternative to normalization is heavy compression. The heavy compression takes the dynamics out of it just a little bit, and if you do not normalize all your tracks, I would suggest doing that, taking that route. But I believe I actually, um, I normalized all these tracks a while ago, so I can't really revert that. So I took the route of normalization, and that's what I did. All these tracks are normalized, and all the waveforms are very similar. All right. So now that we have the normalization done, we've chose to do compression or normalization. We go on to the next phase, and that next phase is getting rid of the quiet parts, the parts that no no vocals are being heard. All right. So if we look at the tracks in here there's no audio but there actually could be there could be the sound of you know clothes you know rustling um, like the actual sound from the headphones coming through the microphone many different things and we want to get rid of that we want to make this very pure and that's exactly what we're going to do and the easiest way to do that is by using a little thing called strip silence so if we select that audio file we can come up to audio and then strip silence and it opens up this cool pane for us. Now what this does is it chops up our audio into segments and those segments are the big audio parts. If we increase the threshold more the anything below the threshold will be cut so if we increase that threshold a lot a lot of our audio will be cut but if we decrease our, our threshold there becomes more smaller uh, audio files and we do not want that um, so you have to find a happy medium and that happy medium I s looks for this audio file is about three percent alright so if I press OK it will chop up that audio file for me hooray that's very good and that's exactly what we want so you guys are gonna have to sit back and watch me do this to every single one of these yep so how's your day going Freaking great, I hope. I can take this time to do a little bit of shameless advertising, like a best. I have a Twitter and a Facebook that are pretty magical. Y'all should go check it out. Like, no lie. Should go do that right now. All right, are we done? Looks like we're done, all right. What I'm going to do is 
at this point, I want to really, really focus on the vocals. All right, so I'm actually going to hide the rest of my tracks, and so it just shows the vocal tracks. All right, and each of these vocal tracks have the silence cut out of them, which is exactly what we need. So if we go in and solo it, it's a long way home from places. The silent parts are actually completely silent, and that's exactly what we want, which is perfect. All right, and then sometimes your um, the strip silence actually puts in other audio files that you don't need, like those two I don't need, this one I don't need. Um, so you just have to go back through and look and see which ones, if they put in extra audio files that you didn't want. Uh, usually if there's a little clip before a bigger audio file, that's a breath, and you want to keep those breaths. It's very, it's more natural sounding if you have breaths in your music, in, other than if you don't, alright? So that's a good thing to keep in mind. Okay, so now that we have these all set up, I would start going into the EQ phase. EQ and compression. There has been a lot of talk about EQ before compression or compression before EQ. And I have always been one to do EQ before compression. But I actually looked into this topic very recently and found that if you do EQ before compression, the compression actually um, almost not kills but decreases the amount of boosting and um, taking away you do with the EQ. The compression um, molds the track, it just kind of like increases the low parts and decreases the high parts. So if you put that EQ before that compression, it starts compressing what you actually did in the EQ. And that's not totally exactly what you want. So you could do EQ afterwards, but the problem with that is the compression brings up the lows and so if you e if you want to EQ out a certain frequency it's going to be harder because that frequency is going to be louder the uh, the lower parts um, the lower frequencies are going to be increased a little bit or something like that so you really want to it's like a trade-off and if you really want to go in and do this for real I might even suggest doing an EQ compression and then EQ the first EQ would be for say cutting frequencies and then you would have a compression and the last one would be for actually boosting certain frequencies that you would like alright so you can go that route but I'm going to stick to the old traditional way of EQ and then compression alright so let's get some EQ on this track alright so the whole technique to um, getting a decent EQ is to increase one of the bands narrow it and then just kind of pan it down your frequency spectrum and try to find frequencies that you like and that you don't like. You need to find some that you like and you don't like because there's a give and a take with EQ. You, If you boost some part of the EQ, you need to take away or decrease the gain at another part. You don't want to be increasing or decreasing the overall volume of the track with your EQ. Alright, so I'm going to do that quickly here. This might get annoying, but stick with me here. It's a long way home from places that we've run so far away. And I don't. All right, so the frequency that I didn't like was 230, so I'm going to be decreasing that part pretty significantly. And then the upper frequency that I did like was, there was two of them, there was 15, there was 1500 and there was like 32. So I'm going to be increasing those just a little bit here. Alright, so we get this is the kind of compression that we want. Now with vocals, you want to, you don't want the whole spectrum to be coming through because you want to get some of that low end to your kicks and your basses. You want to give some of the high end to your hi-hats and high end percussion in general. Alright, so a, a high cut and a low cut uh, is generally necessary. The amount of low cut and high cut is totally up to you. Um, I wouldn't do it by a significant amount, but if you listen to the music, 
or if you actually put the analyzer on and play the track. It's a long way. You can see that there's not too Stay much home. there's not too much even being played down here in the lower frequencies when the actual audio is being played. So why not just cut out anything below there? It's not going to make too big of a difference in the actual sound of the audio, but it will when you're trying to free up that low end and same with the high end also. So that's going to be good for my for what I'm going to be doing. And as you can see, I'm giving and I'm taking away. And that's exactly what you want to be doing. So the overall volume of the track will be the same. And that same concept is going to be put into compression also. All right, so you're going to be affecting this threshold to get a certain gain reduction. And then you're going to add back in that gain with this, uh, with this auto or this gain right here. All right, now the amount of gain reduction is up to you. If your track is very um, dynamic in nature, you might want to increase the uh, compression or the gain reduction by more than, you know, six or eight. I usually do the compression to about eight, uh, but if you are the person who didn't normalize the track, you might want to even increase it more, maybe say 10 or 12 decibels of gain reduction, and that's totally fine. All right, and for vocals, the attack and release is going to be low. Why? Because you want the compression moving with the dynamics of the vocals. So a uh, low attack and a low release is is good. All right, and then ratio, a low ratio is, is also um, very good also. So I'm going to be editing the threshold to get a gain reduction of about negative eight decibels. Let's do this right now. It's a long way home from places that Oh, I forgot to say, um, if you did watch my video on circuit types, the class AU is going to be generally a better type of compression for vocals. I can't believe I forgot that. Um, the reason why is stated in the video that I just put out. I'll just post a link really quick if you want to go check that out. But for right now, all you really need to know is that class AU is a very good compression for vocals. All right, so now let's do what I was just saying and get that gain reduction down to about negative eight. It's a long way home from places that we've run so far away. All right, so you want the average of the jumps to be around eight, and that's about what it was. So then I'm going to increase the gain to eight. And so there's a taking away and a giving back of the volume. All right. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be just copying and pasting these. Command option, click and drag across all three of my vocal tracks. And there you are, channel EQ and compression. Now, after this, you might want to do a de -esser if your vocalist has a very harsh S sound that's coming through. Uh, you're going to have to make that decision for yourself. And there's a million de videos out, of, out there if you want to do that, but I'm going to skip that phase, actually. All right? And I have a lot more to talk about, so I'm actually going to be splitting this up into two videos. This is going to be the end of the first part. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about reverb and delay, bus, and auxiliary tracks, and then finding a good stereo space with your with your uh, vocals so that they can sit nicely in with the mix of the general song. All right, so I will post a link or a link to the next video. All right, well, thank you for watching, everyone. If you have questions or comments, please hit me up in the comments or a message. And uh, thanks for watching. Peace out.